So in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to really push the colors of a photo in a way that makes it pop or appear a bit more surreal, but also keeps the photo looking natural enough that people don't question that it's totally fake or it looks really out of line. And this photo I'm using right here is the one we're going to be using in this video. It's a totally free photo on Unsplash, and I'll link that in the description. So download that if you want to use this as we go along. It's a fun photo to use because it has such crazy colors to start out with but feel free to use whatever photo you want. And here's where I ended up with this particular photo. So this is the redo of the colors that I did, and I'll be walking through my, my typical thought process and how I approach doing this. So once again, this is the original, this is where I ended up. So it doesn't look crazy out of line or out of place compared to the original, but it also allowed me to have a much more cohesive color palette that feels like a smooth gradient, which is something I like doing. So here is this photo opened up just as if you were to just drag this photo into Photoshop. And the first thing I tend to do is go to layers, double click on the background, which will bring up this little thing. And I just hit OK. And the whole reason of doing that is to unlock this layer. So then I can select this in layers palette and hit control J or command J, which just duplicates it. So that way, if you make a bunch of crazy changes to the photo itself and you want to go back or compare it to the original, you have a layer on top and it makes it very easy to do that. So you might think that the first thing you'll do is go to hue saturation, which is something people tend to use a lot for shifting colors. But the problem with hue saturation is that as you go through here almost instantly, and I don't know how this is going to fragment with YouTube's compression that it does, but this looks very unnatural, very unrealistic, kind of like a trippy screensaver or something as I go through these different hue options. None of these really look the same as far as the tone and palette and overall color gradation as the original. So this isn't a great way to go. And so what I tend to use is a much, much, much more powerful tool called selective color. And you go to image, and then from image, you go to adjustments. And from adjustments, you want to find selective color, which is about two thirds of the way down. So you want to go to image, adjustments, selective color, and then open up that. And selective color basically lets you choose what color in the photo you want to manipulate. So there's reds, yellows, greens, cyan. As you can see, there's a bunch of different options here. And then you can tweak each color individually, which lets you have a ton of control. So actually, what I tend to do with this is just go one by one down. So start with reds and work my way down through all the different colors until I have the entire color palette covered. And that kind of gets you very close to the end result. So even if you don't see a red in the photo, just start dragging these bars left and right, and you can start to see what it's doing. So in this case, you can start to see, especially on this floor area, as I drag this left and right, what it's doing. So it's kind of on you to decide what tone shifts you think look interesting, but I just go down from cyan, magenta, yellow, and black, and do this exact same thing, trying to figure out where I wanna push these colors. And I don't know if I'm gonna end up in a similar spot to my example image, I just do these one by one. It's just a fun process where you get to play around with settings and see what looks the best to you. And if you ever want to go back to where you started, just hit the zero button when you have that particular color thing selected, and it will bring you right back to the starting point. And there's also a preview button. You can check on and off if you want to see very quickly what your adjustments are doing. But I just go down from there. So I change it from reds to yellows, and then I start tweaking these to decide what I think looks good. This one isn't having almost any of an effect. There's a yellow thing back here that I'm tweaking a little bit. So I think for pretty much anyone who does something like this, it's just a matter of trying out what works and deciding if that looks good to you or not. Ultimately, when I watch a lot of people work with Photoshop or even completely different things like sound editing, they just know what the thing does and then they play around with the settings enough until they hit a point that they think looks good in the end. So there's basically no greens in this particular image. So what I'm doing here isn't having too much of an effect. In the upper portion of this really cyan blue at the top, I am seeing some shifts. So I'm going to kind of move this much more to a cyan because that's what I'm going for. And now for cyans, I should see quite a few different things shift as I move this around. So I'm trying to decide how much I want to push this particular image. And I'm also being careful not to make it look really fake because that's a, a dangerous thing that you can do, especially with black. On any of these different colors, black will be the most apparent in terms of what you're doing. So just be careful not to push things too far into a really fake looking area because then it just kind of ruins your image. 
So then I'm going to go to blues. There's a lot of blues and purples that kind of transition through here. So I expect this to have quite a bit of impact and it's definitely doing that. So if I go all the way to the right here, really dark, dark navy blues. And if I push that all the way to the left, it actually turns purple. So I can decide how much I do or do not want to push this. And I don't remember what I did on my previous image. So I'm just going to do what I think looks good here overall. So I'm kind of pushing this back and forth, trying to make a decision of what I think looks all right. And there's no right or wrong answer as you're doing this. It's just what do you think looks good for the look you're trying to achieve? So just keep moving the settings around and you can always revisit and go back to other colors too as you shift stuff around and you try to figure out what makes sense visually for what you're trying to achieve. So that looks really different there as you push this magenta all the way over, but that's not a color I'm going for. So I'm just going to keep moving this around. So just slowly but surely work your way towards your end goal. And there's another step after this one as well, as far as past selective color. So we'll go through that, which kind of helps you shift the overall tone of the entire image. So, I mean, I could go for a really, really contrasting image here, or I can make it much more soft using that black. So always be careful with black because that'll push the overall color the most. And then just generally speaking, whites, blacks, and neutrals at the bottom of the color options here will tend to push stuff the most. White is probably the least of all of them since it just actually works on the whites, but for sure the neutrals and the blacks will have a huge impact on your image. So when you get down to those, be careful as it will really start to change the overall visual impact of what you're working on. So I can make this actually a true white by pushing this quite a bit, but I think that looks a little bit out of place. Like I said before, there's no right or wrong answer, just what looks good to you at the time. So if I turn my preview on and off, you can start to see the fairly drastic differences in visuals that are happening right here. But as I go into neutrals here, that's where some really wild shifts are going to start happening. So I'm going to be a little bit more careful with this one as the choices I'm making are pretty drastic in terms of the impacts they have. And I actually like how I'm pushing this right here to, I'm watching this wall fairly carefully as I move these things around. And I'm being careful too, not to make this look too washed out or too different. But as you can see, this has a huge impact on the overall tone. So it's just up to you as you're taking whatever image, going through those options to decide what the direction should be. And as I start to move this yellow option here, it gives it a really purplish tint that changes the image quite a bit. So I actually like that. And like I said before, with black, just be careful as you push this, because when you move it far left, it actually whitens the entire image drastically. And if you push it all the way to the right, it becomes very, very dark and contrasty, as you might expect. So I tend not to use the black option too much and just kind of move along past that, especially when in neutrals. And now for the final one, which is blacks. So once again, in blacks here, I'll be careful as this can have a pretty big impact on the image itself, but I'm just kind of shifting stuff around and it's doing most of the differences in the lower left and lower right where the heavy shadows are. So I'm just watching those as I move this around and trying to keep it overall natural looking. And this is pushing it pretty far. So I'm actually gonna leave that at 0%. So if I go back to the preview checkbox here and turn this on and off, you can see a very, very drastic change. I took away a lot of the greens in this upper section, which kind of made this whole thing feel to me a little bit more cohesive in terms of the color palette, although it's not quite as varied, which for sure there's interest in that, but I always like working within really soft gradient color palettes. It's just fun for me to do. So that's what I'm pushing this image towards as I go back and forth between these. So I actually feel pretty good about this selective color. I'm going to hit OK because I feel like I'm in a good spot to move on to the next thing. So now you're going to want to go to image and then adjustments. And this time, instead of selective color, you want to go to color balance. And the shortcut is control B on a PC or command B on a Mac. And I'll just open up the color balance here. And I'm going to move this a little bit over the image so you can see that easier. But color balance works kind of similar to selective color. It's just not as detailed per color. So it lets you pick midtones, shadows, and highlights. And then you can use these color sliders to just tweak the overall tone of this entire image. So as I push it red, this becomes much more red or pink. And as I push this to the cyan, it really brightens up the cyans there. So this is the stock. And I like this as I'm pushing the cyan to give this a much more cohesive look up the top here. So I'm going to keep that with magenta and green. If I go over here, it really pushes the greens in the blue colors. If I bring it magenta, it actually darkens the whole image as it's trying to push a lot more of that color in there. So once again, just be careful as you go through this not to push it 
too far, but ultimately it's about what you think looks good and you should just go with that. So now I've completed the midtones, I'm gonna jump into shadows. I don't know why, but I always go for midtones to shadows and then to highlights to finish it off. So back to the cyan and red bar, just dragging this around to see if I like how this change looks. I actually really like the starting point. So I think I'm gonna leave that as it was. Magenta and green, just checking out if I like any of these changes really. I, th I feel pretty good about the image as a whole, so I don't wanna change anything too much actually. And this is the yellow and blue bar. I actually think I'm gonna leave that, huh. I kind of like how it darkens this bottom here to give us a bit more depth. So I'm gonna keep that sort of down there a bit and then jump to highlights and this will be the final thing we do. So with the cyan and red, I can decide if I wanna push it like this to brighten it up or this really starts to do some kind of cool vibration stuff with this pink color. But I like it a lot more as it pushes the cyan to be much more bright. I actually like this better than the other example I showed. So I'm gonna push this one, which is the magenta and green bar until I think it looks good. And then the same for yellow and blue. So I actually like that. Just a tweak to the right. Now I feel like I'm done with the color balance. So we're actually done with this particular image. And I would use this exact same process for any image that I use. It's just if the colors aren't as vibrant, then it can be a much more subtle effect. But if I turn this to the original versus now, because this had such bright colors to begin with and such a variety of colors to begin with, it had a lot of control. I love doing this with galaxy images as well. It can give you incredible power to really make those NASA galaxies look much more painterly or soft and gradiated than they would from the photo itself. So that's a lot of fun. And as you can see with a lot of stuff, tweaking colors and photos is just about playing around with the settings until you like the end result. There isn't a right or wrong way to do it. And it isn't even knowing about like what specifically you expect to happen as you change a certain slider. It's just a willingness to try it out, see the changes as they impact the photo, and then making the call about what you think looks the best. So I do hope you found this video helpful. It's a ton of fun to do, one of my favorite things to do in Photoshop. So I thought I'd share it with you. And if you did find the video helpful, please hit the thumbs up button. If you have a comment or a question, feel free to drop that in the comment section down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please subscribe. I do my best to keep creating new videos for designers just like this. Thank you so much for watching.